Okay, so I hope uh, you're you're seeing uh, the the first slide. This was is is kind of my outline. I thought I'd try and actually have an uh, outline. This is what I hope to get uh, through today. Um, and uh, part of this uh, is going to be, I hope, answering Bob Oxenborough's uh, question about how how's come that uh, they persisted in thinking uh, that Baja California was an island uh, for so long. Um, but I, I can't resist uh, saying something about Ukraine, right? I mean, we spent uh, so many hours talking about uh, Ukraine and, and when there's a... a uh, developments, uh, uh, I can't resist at least uh, mentioning them. So you all remember the, the Chechens, um, and uh, uh, Putin has sent a Chechen warlord in, into Ukraine, along with uh, um, all the freed prisoners <laughs> from the killers that he's released from his jails, so the, a motley crew. Uh, and and we've uh, heard that the, the, the their leader um, uh, Kadrov ha has his his own agenda, and he's been quite vocal in criticizing the established uh, Russian Army command. Um, uh, but all of a sudden, there there's a theory that he's been poisoned, and we know that Putin's poisoned a lot of people. But he looks uh, look how bloated uh, he looks uh, from a year ago. Um, and he sent for a doctor from the UAE. He doesn't trust uh, Moscow doctors. And he was absent from uh, Putin's State of the Nation speech uh, recently. So the, the, the rumors swirl. The rumors continue to swirl about uh, Prigozhin, especially now uh, in, in Bakhmut. Again, uh, I'm finding uh, the, the Telegraph uh, podcast just uh, excellent. And they're talking about, about Bakhmud being like a rope dopa strategy. Remember Muhammad Ali? He would take punishment, wear out his opponent, and then blast them when they were least expecting it. And the Russians are taking five casualties for every one casualty that, that Ukraine's uh, taken. And then uh, they just reported today about a possible, a possible mutiny of Russian soldiers and and Solodar uh, nearby. So and and everybody from the Economist to the Telegraph to everything that I've read is talking about a, a, a spring a, a offensive. And this is, of course, is something Timothy Snyder predicted a long time ago. Uh, this is an interesting uh, map that uh, the podcast uh, uh, turned me on to. This uh, lists the uh, number of war casualties per 1,000 people from different regions of uh, Russia. Um, and you can see the lightest casualties are Moscow um, and, and St. Petersburg. Wow. And that points to the possibility of some ethnic uh, tensions arising if this goes on uh, much, much longer. And you've you've already heard grumblings from the Caucasus, mothers in, in, in the uh, Caucasus. So uh, the other thing that's happened is you know, we've we've covered the Silk Road and um, uh, Blinken is is there. Uh, he got a warm reception, uh, reception from the, the Kazakh uh, president who thanked the United States for protecting their territorial integrity, um, important uh, words. Um, uh, the, all five leaders, the five uh, stands uh, uh, met with uh, uh, Blinken. Uh, the point was made that a lot of these uh, 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 former Soviet um, Soviets um, from the, the steppes uh, uh, still have a lot of ethnic uh, uh, Russians, and they worry that uh, Putin's going to think that he has to protect them, too, like he's protecting Russians, he's, as he, he thinks he's doing, in, in Ukraine, and that there might even be some encouragement of separatism. Um, uh, just a, a little blurb about uh, Kazakh. They've got 19 million there. 3.5 of that 19 are ethnic Russians. So that's quite a quite a few. Plus, there's another 200,000 Russians uh, draft dodging. 
uh, in, in Kazakhstan alone, uh, world's uh, largest landlocked uh, nation. Uh, but they're planning uh, a, a new rail lines. Uh, uh, heretofore, it's been rail links to Russia and China. I'll talk about that next on the next slide. The other thing about uh, Kazakh is the uh, oil, 60% of the exports. And um, American energy companies are, are deeply there. One of my uh, Stanford classmates uh, wor worked for a company and lived in um, uh, Almaty um, for for a decade uh, dur during the 80s. So I, I, I heard from him directly about that. This is the, the, the new rail uh, line, and this is being promoted by uh, Erdogan and Turkey. So they, they've got a, a dog in, in the fight. They uh, are, identify with all these Turkic uh, tribes. And of course, they identify with the Uyghurs. Um, and we have a, a, a friend who uh, studied in, in Turkey. And when he went to uh, Xinjiang, he was amazed that he could understand. Uh, uh, so the Turkic language, they have all these countries have that in common the Turkic uh, uh, culture. And Turkey's always been advocating uh, uh, to uh, uh, send the, the transport links uh, through through them, or at least uh, closer to them. And that's exactly uh, what what they're, they're going to do. Uh, uh, heretofore, because all these uh, Turkic republics were uh, 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 a part of the Soviet Union, everything went went through Moscow north. Uh, but now um, uh, they want to start sending things uh, west, uh, near near to Turkey, across the Caspian Sea, maybe even north through Georgia, and and avoiding um, uh, Russia. Uh, completely. Now, who's going to benefit from that? China, big time. Um, uh, and so this is part of their Belt and, and Road Initiative. So the, this uh, 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 friendship that uh, uh, Putin purports to have with China is, is not uh, stopping this new uh, 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 rail link. You, you've seen some of them some of the lines uh, sketched in. I've, I've, I did this in the, in the past. I'm not going to take time to re redo it. Um, but uh, notice that uh, they're they're even tying in uh, Kabul into this, and and um, uh, with a possible link on the uh, Peshwar. Um, so interesting development there. Um, and then this I, I found very interesting reading up on it. The, the, the Kazakhs have openly sided with the Ukrainians, and they've sent them um, uh, humanitarian aid in the form of yurts, yurts of invincibility that they put up on the streets of uh, Ukrainian towns that have been bombed. People can go into these portable yurts, get warm, uh, charge their cell phones, <laughs> Uh, and uh, eat Kazakh food and, and, and tea. And the Kazakhs refuse to go along with those uh, uh, bogus uh, referendums that were attaching Don Donbass uh, to the Soviet Union. They say that they're not recognizing those quasi-state territories. Um, and so uh, very interesting development uh, there, uh, and their leader, the Kazakh leader, has close ties with Zelensky. Um, I wanted to mention this. Uh, the, um, uh, uh, you know, Ramsey uh, uh, and, and Janet and other people are planning to go to, to the stands. We no longer are. Um, but uh, we were talking about uh, movies, and I recommended this this movie that we saw at the Jewish Film Festival, uh, I think 15 years ago. Uh, but I remembered it, and uh, I, we I pulled it up, found it uh, on um, uh, uh, YouTube. Actually, McKinsey found it for me. Uh, uh, my uh, uh, pub fellow pub member at our neighborhood pub for which Rudy is, is the proprietor. Um, he found it for me and we rewatched it with, with, with Ramsey. And it's just a heartwarming story 
It's 1949. Uh, so there's a lot of tragic things going on in the background. But the gift to, to, to Stalin, um, uh, I was telling uh, David the, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the plot line, but I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Um, I, I, I think Iko agrees with me and Ramsey and Janet both uh, loved it as well. So there you are, a movie recommendation, a Kazakh movie. It's made uh, in cooperation with uh, three other countries, uh, um, uh, Israel, uh, Poland, and, and Russia. Uh, and there was uh, 2008 when, uh, or 2004, I think, when Putin still had a soul. Um, all right, so... Uh, that, that's my quick swirl through uh, former uh, topics. Uh, uh, Bob. Well, th excellent. I mean, I didn't know you could even get to see the pod that there was a Telegraph podcast. The Daily Telegraph is the, um, always has been, the most conservative of the uh, English uh, newspapers, which, uh, and so sometimes their reporting is, uh, it sort of leans that way a little too much, but uh, they deal with facts on a factual basis as well. So it's a, it's a good publication. Uh, they also have an excellent uh, cryptic crossword. I was struck by the um, the meeting of Blinken with the stands. It sort of, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm recalling that about uh, three or four months ago, um, uh, Putin had a Caspian kind of uh, country meeting no, no, it, it, it was the, the Shanghai uh, a Cooperative Organization. They met uh, in, in Uzbekistan, I think. Okay, all right. I was just wondering which would, which had more bonhomie, the Blinken meeting or the uh, Putin meeting? Well, Putin, uh, there wasn't much bonhomie. You remember the, 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 the Shanghai countries included uh, Indri, India, and Modi came and, oh, okay. and, and chided him. Uh, came and, and chided him, and, and the, uh, uh, the, the stands uh, were lukewarm. So, uh, and he, uh, yeah, so uh, th that's how I'd answer that question. Well, could I just say something about in the LA Times? It says Russian soldiers can surrender with ease via hotline operated by Ukrainian military. Yeah, I, I saw that. I, I yeah. thought that was that was interesting, and uh, uh, accordingly, the the, the mutinies. There there may be more people interested in doing that. Okay, then I, I can't help but make one last further comment. I did read the other day that von Clausewitz would be absolutely horrified by the lack of unity of command on the Russian side when you were talking about. Adarov and Rogozin and so on, that, that there's no unity of command which spells disaster according to Clausewitz, apparently. Well, and the, the, the disaster may be the insistence of Progozian to take Bakhmut. He, he, he's not doing, doing it for um, uh, strategic reasons. He's doing it uh, to brag on, to be able to brag on his troops and show uh, the first Russian victory. Uh, and it, it, it may be a Pyrrhic uh, a victory if, if the, the casualties really are five to one. By definition. Yes. Okay, are we ready to charge uh, time travel back uh, to California history? Yep. Okay, so uh, the, the coyote. Uh, uh, after I, I talked about coyote last time, I did uh, some more reading. This was one of our last uh, slides about uh, Miwok uh, mythology and how coyote uh, uh, is so uh, pivotal. He, he created uh, Earth. He created humans out of uh, turkey feathers. He, uh, uh, and, and when you die, uh, you, you, you go in the direction, your spirit goes in the direction of the sun uh, to be with a, a coyote in the, in the afterworld. Well, um, I, I read some, some more, uh, and Farragher, has, he devotes like three or four pages to the coyote uh, stories. 
Um, and he quotes uh, Gary Snyder, who is a very respected uh, uh, a poet. Um, uh, and uh, they think that, that, that a Coyote is the, the uh, American anti-hero. Uh, uh, but but he's dealing with with the world as it is, except occasionally. And they he has this quote where Coyote uh, uh, fantasized that it would be wonderful to fly. So he climbed into a tree and launched himself, but it didn't go well. And I'm thinking, wait a second, uh, this <laughs> this is in the spirit of the uh, the coyote of the uh, run uh, uh, road runner uh, <laughs> franchise, um, and and it, it never goes well with with his uh, uh, schemes. Um, and he 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 goes on and and represents coyote as kind of an everyman. He he's he, he he's a. Uh, uh, I got a good heart most of the time, smart, helpful, compassionate, but he's a blunderer. He's a victim of his own schemes like we often are. Um, and uh, he arrogantly thinks that his plans are really going to work, except uh, when he goes off a cliff and you know what happens in the next frame. He looks down, he sees that there's no earth. And only when he looks down, does he realize, does gravity take effect? Um, all right, so uh, uh, enough of Coyote. Um, the last time we were looking at the different ling linguistic uh, groups, uh, we've dealt with uh, Hokan and, and, and Panushan, um, uh, and, and that's kind of where we left off uh, 5,000 uh, years ago. Um, about 1,300 uh, years ago, uh, we hinted that that's kind of when the Athabascans uh, uh, drifted in. Uh, th there was a little bit more aggression up on, on uh, the north coast. Apparently, um, the, the sedentary uh, combination of resources, uh, salmon rights on the river uh, 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 and acorns uh, 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 groves, uh, uh, caused some territoriality, um, and all of a sudden the the uh, 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 paleontologists or uh, uh, anthropologists are finding out that the uh, grave sites are less egalitarian, uh, and this idea of uh, that the anthropologists have of the of, uh, uh, distribution of land. Uh, ideal free distribution, as long as there's plenty of land. Uh, uh, newcomers drift in, leave uh, people that are established alone and go and find the next best piece of land. And that had been the arrangement for millennia. But then uh, things uh, took a different turn. The bow and arrow came in. Uh, and there's a paradox. Uh, assuredly, there, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, bow and arrow caused increased violence between groups. But if you look with, with, within a group, there, there, there was a more peaceful turn. It's a contradiction, a paradox. Um, and the, the explanation is um, that a single hunter could be much more efficient with a bow and arrow. Uh, that you could go out and you could get food for, for your family by yourself without going out with two or three other guys to corner uh, the game, and it allowed um, uh, 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 Native Californians to settle down uh, and, and uh, uh, be sedentary and on all the advantage of, of culture uh, uh, that that has. And, and that, was, that accounted for a more, the more uh, peaceful turn as uh, opposed to wandering groups bumping into each other and fighting. Um, and so, because of that, uh, uh, on the eve of European uh, uh, invasion, California was the most densely populated region of the continent. And I think I've uh, uh, quoted uh, both uh, Farragher uh, and Rawls uh, 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 know about that. The, um, the bow and arrow te uh, technology was witnessed uh, uh, firsthand by Americans uh, during the, uh, the gold rush. 
So this is uh, independently verified how remarkably uh, accurate and powerful even even their children were uh, with the bow and arrow. Um, and, and the first group of uh, uh, native Californians that the Spanish are gonna encounter, uh, these are the, the people of the South Coast. Sa uh, and, and San Diego was, was part of their territory. This is the first group they're, they're gonna meet and they were excellent archers and, and uh, uh, bow makers. The accounts were that if there was warfare, uh, uh, that was usually very short lived and, and ended with the first shedding uh, uh, of blood. Um, so uh, I, this is a tease, this, uh, Indian with uh, this Native American with a bow and arrow is Ishi. And uh, I, I, I wanna meditate a little bit on Ishi um, uh, uh, for personal reasons, really. He, um, he was a, a Yahi, he was an enemy of the, of the Maidu. Uh, he has a, a wilderness in California named for him. I, I don't know if you've been there, Pepper, um, yeah. uh, uh, so it's up uh, uh, between Chester um, and, and uh, Red Bluff, um, and this was was, was his uh, uh, territory, Deer Deer Creek. Um, yeah, just below Lassen, broke off mountain. There on the top is the is the Lassen. Yep, right up there. That's that's Lassen National Park. So yeah. So uh, Ishi now. Uh, he, uh, after he, he surrendered uh, and was found, um, an anthropologist, Krober, who has buildings named after him. I don't know if they're still named after him uh, on uh, the Berkeley uh, camp uh, campus. Uh, he, he met uh, Ishii and studied Ishii. Um, it, it, he commented that Ishii knew Spanish. And I thought that was interesting that maybe uh, uh, he was born in a happier time when the Spanish were in charge, because by the time uh, 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 Americans immigrated and, and rolled west in, in wagon trains, uh, the, the, they were a little bit more genocidal, uh, we Americans were, than, than the Spanish were. Um, and so uh, what I'm I, 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 it really tied me in was this book, Ishi's, Ishi's Brain. Um, by the way, there are also a, a, a couple of good resources on, on YouTube. Um, uh, but Ishi, Ishi's Brain tells the story um, uh, of his stay on Parnassus, Mount Parnassus, Parnassus Heights. That's where the medical school is. What's going on? Why would why would Ishi be at the medical school? Well, here was the the medical school in in uh, 1908. This is uh, my my alma mater. I have fond memories. Um, I can, I in fact uh, lived at, uh, in a nice, uh, wonderful studio uh, apartment about a block uh, 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 north of, of the streetcar line. Um, and this building over here was uh, the Anthropology Museum. And this is where Krober hang, hung out. So this was a, a, a campus of uh, state institutions, one right next to each other. And Krober decided, um, that he was going to take charge of uh, Ishi, provide him with uh, with room and board, and what better place for him to live than inside the anthropology museum, kind of as a quasi janitor, if you will, or night watchman. Um, and so there he was, and it, living right next to the med school, he bonded with this this uh, surgeon. Saxton Pope. Um, and what they had in common was a passion for the bow and arrow. Uh, and there were tons of bow and arrows in the Anthropology Museum. <laughs> they had a collection uh, that included 
Japanese uh, bows and arrows. And these two people became friends, close friends. Um, uh, uh, Pope was uh, uh, an amazing Renaissance man. Uh, he, he knew magic tricks. That's what really <laughs> attracted uh, Ishii was Pope's magic tricks. But Pope did a lot of things. He made musical instruments. Uh, he, he, he was he was quite a guy, but he was a very good uh, archer. Uh, and so they would check out uh, bows and arrows and go down to Golden Gate Park and play with, and test out the, the, the bows and arrows. And they bonded so much that uh, 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 Ishii took Pope up to uh, Deer Creek and they explored his his former um uh, uh abode uh, a cave um and uh they on one trip they took uh, Krober uh with them um and so uh uh he he earned his keep uh uh in particular on Sundays where he would be a a, a meter and a and a greeter um on the weekdays he would often go over with Pope to the hospital and go with Pope on rounds. Uh, and he he'd he'd stand like like Pope on rounds and putting it folding his hands in front of him. Uh, he 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 was said to, to be uh, compassionate and had the uh, uh, the bearing of a healer. <laughs> um, but the problem in all this, was number one, he was exposed to six sick people in the hospital uh, for which he had uh, uh, low immunity. Um, and as a meter and greeter meeting the public coming wandering in off the street every Sunday, he, he was uh, exposed to uh, uh, tuberculosis and contracted uh, tuberculosis. But uh, uh, this is both of them uh, with their, their bow and arrow. Um, and uh, it, it, Ishii's brain tells the story of what happens when uh, Ishii dies of uh, uh, tuberculosis. Um, after he dies, Saxon Pope goes on and, and, and writes a book on the bow and arrow, which he uh, <laughs> uh, dedicated uh, uh, grandiloquently to Robin Hood. Um, but if you look at the first three chapters of the book, it's about Ishii. Um, and so Ishii is uh, very much the star uh, of his book. Um, there's uh, a little bit of a controversy with uh, Ishii's death. Um, Ishii, the, the, the way of his uh, tribe uh, was to, to burn the body, and that was, that was that. But Pope, being a man of science, uh, was just obsessed with, with doing a, uh, a post-mortem and uh, measuring uh, everything that, he could, that could, you could measure about Ishii. Uh, in those days, uh, uh, bodily measurements was 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 more important than than it is to today. Um, but he he insisted on on uh, he didn't do the uh, post mortem uh, the uh, but uh, one of his friends did uh, at his uh, insistence, uh, and he he said that he was doing what was best for science and that Ishii uh, would understand. Krober uh, was very much against it, uh, and so th there was there was that. Um, but the details that are given of of Ishii's uh, final uh, weeks uh, show how compassionately Pope felt towards him and how how lovingly he treated them. And then. Uh, uh, aside from the postmortem, the body was was handled with great delicacy, and when they um, uh, cremated him, they they put his bow and arrow, his favorite bow and arrow, uh, in with him, 
uh, and uh, Pope put in an arrow that he had made just for Ishii's journey uh, uh, to the afterlife. Um, so there were there were there were grace notes, but of course the ethics uh, of the time and actually the performance of of, of, of a, uh, autopsy, which would uh, horrify um a, a, a traditional culture uh, uh they're content they, they that has to be contended with and the book does that um and uh, i would i was in a book club that read uh, of doctors that read it and it was quite a quite a session that we had um but anyway that uh uh I, uh, the bow and arrow, and I just couldn't help but uh, uh, bring in uh, Ishii's uh, story because it involved uh, so much of, of my my experience in San Francisco. Um, so uh, just to uh, uh, get back now to the Athabascans um, and uh, the, the, the the new um, uh, uh, culture that that entered uh, California. The, the increased territoriality, but but uh, paradoxically um, uh, less sign of, of uh, actual violence. Um, and I just point out again that that the Athabascans, uh, they the Navajos were Af Athabascans, and they arrived in Arizona to torment the Hopis a, a few hundred years after uh, uh, the Athabascans arrived in in California. Um, the uh, Rawls breaks down the common causes for uh, warfare. There, there are no surprises here. Uh, the territoriality, uh, the, the, the uh, fighting over uh, a rare game, the abduction of women, which is just a recurring theme, starting with the Homer's uh, Iliad. And we, we found an in uh, Indian culture, too, from South Asia. Um, uh, the Mahabharata is all all about uh, uh, Rama and uh, uh, Ramayana, uh, the, the abduction of uh, 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 Rama's uh, wife as, as well. Uh, but the most warfare, as I said earlier, was short lived, and there were uh, reparations involved uh, if if uh, a family had been the victim of uh, uh, violence, one of their loved ones, the the uh, guilty party. Uh, uh, would pay, uh, pay rep, rep, uh, reparations or maybe perform ongoing work, uh, uh, not not slavery exactly, but but uh, uh, some sort of contract um, uh, to work for a family and uh, to uh, as reparation um, uh, uh, feuds, um, and then rare resources, uh, uh, currency. Uh, was uh, in addition to seashells, um, teeth, uh, teeth, and and so when you you went and and gambled, uh, and they were there was reports of gambling in Vasco caves even um, that they get what did they gamble for uh, seashells and and teeth um, kind of currency. Um, Iko and I have visited uh, the uh, Northwest and, and the salmon um, runs uh, up there on the Klamath uh, River. Um, and uh, the, the Yurok Reservation is defined as being a half mile on either side of the, the Klamath uh, River. Uh, so it, it 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 it's determined by the the river its itself. Only Yurok's are allowed to do net fishing. Uh, 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 others are not allowed to do net fishing. Um, and I I just we we went up there and it's it's quite a place. Um, you don't go you go up there uh, on uh, one, uh, one highway one, but you don't go across the Klamath River, which has a bridge with a, with two bears. You turn off before then and you go down uh, and this is a sacred site uh, where the Klamath goes in outlets into the um, uh, ocean. Uh, it's a sacred site. Um, 
and there's a lagoon there and you can see a little delta so i think the uh uh okay. the, the river has changed direction many many times um and there as you, you you park your car on the road there's no official parking lot but there's a sign there that just says okay these are our sacred uh, uh ceremonial grounds uh please respect there's no fence or anything um and Iko and I uh, uh went in uh and looked down in into their kivas which went down under underground um and then uh we went out to to the beach and this is just a magical place um where the Klamath I, I guess where any uh, freshwater river dumps into the sea, uh, the sea uh, this kind of estuary uh, mix of uh, sea and, and fresh water, uh, you, you get all kinds of nutrients coming down that attract the, the, the ocean fish and the uh, ocean birds. Uh, and when, where there's a lot of birds, there's seals. There's just tons and tons of seals and some sea lions. Uh, so this is a great place to go. We had we had it to our, our ourselves. Um, uh, so uh, anything you want to add, Iko? Um, I saw a lot of Indians fishing. Uh, you know. Yeah. 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 White guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there were there were uh, 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 Yurox there uh, net fishing. Um, I think that was uh, using a. Uh, Fishing pole. Yeah, and uh, one year we took uh, Swiss friends, and and they were uh, just amazed that they were going to get to see true uh, American Indians. So uh, we went down and talked to to uh, a Yurok, and he was just your ordinary redneck guy. Um, all right. Uh, so there was this one famous Yurok, Klamath River uh, Jack, and he he talked about. Uh, his uh, lifestyle and uh, uh, what what they survived on their staples. But I put this up because he talked about fire, uh, and we've mentioned it theoretically that the uh, uh, the the Miwoks use controlled files uh, fire. But he laid it out and just said, "Here's the reason why fires, uh, controlled fires, uh, annually work." Uh, and I, I won't read through it. We, we did this when we did the um, uh, Miwoks. Um, the other thing I just throw in uh, is it's a great place to buy salmon jerky uh, in, the, in the little city of, of Klamath and also in um, Trinity. Trinity. Uh, the, the city of Trinity up there it just uh, has a great salmon jerky. Um, all right, so uh, that that's the Athabascans. The the, the next group uh, that that are coming in um, are are the Uto Aztecan. Now they're coming in from the south. They may have overlapped and come in at the same time as the Athabascans. All this is kind of uh, an an estimate, um, but uh, so they're they're in 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 red. Um, uh, uh, we had an earlier slide that showed the extent of Udo Aztec and down in the, to, to Mexico and up in, into the Great Basin. Uh, but notice uh, that the Udo Aztec and spread out to the the Channel Islands, which we've talked about being the first uh, established um, human. Uh, societies because of uh, uh, the the advantages and and when the sea level was was lower um, and that uh, uh, whoever the original people were the uh, uh, Udo Aztecans came in and the, so there's constantly a churn of of people and you you can't imagine that it's just one group and they don't mix it's like today it, the, there's just a, a a constant churn and Uzda, uh, udo aztec and uh languages uh were, were spoken finally uh, uh by the by the Chu, chumash maybe uh, uh three thousand uh years ago um so uh this is a a, a nice graph uh from uh rawls that just shows the six 
uh, uh, cultural areas. You know, there's there's over a hundred languages. We're trying to uh, find ways to to make s things simple. I've shown you uh, uh, six major languages, and uh, 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 Rawls breaks it down in, into six cultural uh, areas: the southern, the, the which would be the Chumash, the Channel Islands, the Udo. Uh, uh, Aztecans, the central, which are are, are Miwoks uh, and, and, and the Bay Area, the the um, uh, descendants of, of of the Panutian speakers who who came from uh, the uh, uh, the Great ba uh, uh, Basin, um, the the northwestern that we talk about, the the Athabascan, and then there's. Uh, 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 northeastern and then uh, Great Basin and and then people uh, from the Colorado uh, River. And Rawls makes a, f a few uh, generalizations. Um, but before I go on to that, I just I just we're uh, for, for the next couple of hundred years, we're just going to be pretty much be talking about um, uh, the Channel Islands and 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 the Miwoks. Um, because uh, this is who the Spanish are going to have contact with. Uh, we'll get to these other uh, cultural areas uh, later, but just to uh, throw out some of Rawls' uh, generalizations, he thought uh, the, 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 the Great Basin um, uh, culture was a little bit more violent than the others. Um, the, the, the tribes in the Northwest were, were a little more uh, hierarchical, uh, stratified, uh, social class distinctions, even slavery. In the South, uh, there was a, a Jimson weed uh, a cult, uh, psychedelics induced uh, uh, vision. But I found what he said about in the, uh, women interesting. Uh, in the central region, that is the Miwok area, um, uh, the, the women were uh, were more uh, honored. They're more uh, matriarchal. Uh, it was even a taboo to speak to your mother-in-law. I don't know if that's out of respect or 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 not. Uh, and that the Chumash uh, had um, uh, uh, women that were leaders that ruled the villages and gave uh, gave the uh, uh, orders. Um, so. Uh, Everywhere, though, women uh, were in charge of knowledge, obviously food storage, but also, as demonstrated by Connie Loosely in her uh, uh, Indian days, uh, uh, in charge of dancing and, and singing, which uh, uh, I, I hope we'll do a field trip some, sometime when Connie will uh, lead us like the, the Miwok uh, uh, women uh, did. In the Northwest, uh, uh, the women were the spiritual uh, uh, leaders. You can see from this woman's presentation that she she has the makings of uh, a leader. There was something in the hoopas called a, a world uh, renewal cult. Um, we, we've seen that uh, 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 across the uh, Great Plains, uh, uh, the ghost dance, uh, the, these kind of uh, Indian cults. Uh, this is a Chumash uh, uh, petroglyph, and you can imagine that that, that it might have been uh, created uh, during the consumption of, of uh, Jimson weed. Um, uh, that is uh, on the Channel Islands. Um, it's pretty detailed. Yeah, yeah, uh, very, uh, very detailed. Yeah, very detailed. Like the whole thing is just pretty spread out. Yeah. It's concentrated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, question. Um, the uh, point that Rawls makes, uh, uh, he summed up the, 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 the stories and the uh, moral of stories. Uh, and the uh, the importance that we've learned in, in most Native American uh, 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 cultures of uh, harmony, uh, respecting life forms, thinking of future generations, uh, keeping things uh, uh, in in balance. It was interesting. They had an, a sense of uh, entropy 
uh, in their uh, uh, visualization of the the, the universe uh, that that it, they they could uh, appreciate that it might be running down, uh, running out of energy. Um, they also had a sense of a pre-human race, and we've seen that uh, with with the Hopis, where um, uh, modern humans emerge from a hole at the bottom of the the Grand Canyon. So some sense of uh, evolution, and all this is to contrast what they believed with the uh, Spanish. Uh, and uh, we we know Christianity at that at that time, uh, at at the time of the Inquisition, um, uh, humans were considered. Uh, sinful and fallen. This is this. Uh, uh, Native Americans do not understand the, the, this con concept. Um, the uh, Native Americans, as opposed to say uh, uh, the Cherokee on the East Coast, there was no large uh, group consciousness. Uh, every everything began and ended at at the village uh, uh, limits. Um, there, uh, and this made it difficult in mounting resistance against uh, the Spanish, because there was no sense of solidarity among um, all, all the tribes. Um, but there was a, a diversity, and uh, Rawls makes the statement, uh, of all the places on the earth, um, uh, California had the greatest linguistic diverse, uh, uh, diversity, second only perhaps to Sudan or maybe New Guinea, um, which I thought was remarkable. All right, so there's another tech, uh, another technological uh, advancement, uh, and that's the the boat, uh, and this is introduced uh, on the uh, again on the Channel Islands. Um, they've been ahead on, on a lot of things, and they constructed something called the Tomo. And how did they construct it? Out of redwood. But there are no redwoods down in, in the Channel Islands. So the, th the theory is that uh, redwood was taken down by the California Current, which r runs heav heavily north uh, to south. And then they made these boats uh, using local tar. Uh, so there was some luck involved if, if redwood it drifts down to them and uh, they go on uh, land and tar is seeping out of the ground that they can use as a, as a sealant. That, that, that's a lucky thing. Um, uh, and the the tomol is a... a uh, still today celebrated a big part of the culture and it, if you go to Hawaii you see exactly the same thing exactly the the, the same thing with with these uh, uh, large boats um, uh, the local tar what, what do you mean local tar yeah, so if you've been down to the uh, uh, museum La Brea uh, Tar Pits Museum uh, where they have all these animals that were trapped in in the tar pits, uh, and that were uh, uh, a great uh, a way of collecting ar archaeological uh, uh, specimens. You understand that there was tar, and oil, as we'll find out later, is a big part of Southern California uh, uh, history. Um, uh, Shigeko, this isn't very far from uh, your house. What are all these things? These are oil rigs. Uh, when uh, uh, oil first came in and the, there was a use for them with the combustion engine, uh, people uh, dug oil wells in their in their uh, uh, backyard. Um, there was a uh, the first guy to do it was a, a lawyer who had noticed the La Brea tar pits and on uh, weekends, he just started digging in his backyard and then he hit a gusher. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, his name was Doheny. I think there's a street name for him and in, in, in LA as, uh, as uh, a few other things. Uh, Beverly Hills. Uh, yeah, oh yeah? What? Yeah. Beverly. Um, okay. 
uh, uh, we're going to see Cabrillo, the first uh, uh, Spanish explorer, will later, later complain of uh, smoke in San Pedro. I don't know if that was uh, uh, petrochemical or whether he was there at the month of the Santa Ana wind, so it, it may have been uh, a, a, a fire. Um, the movie There Will Be Blood um, uh, is all about uh, oil in Southern California and how oil distorted Southern California um, and how oil, they, they, they tore out the, uh, the trolley tracks in LA because of oil. Um, and here is a beach in Southern California. I'm not sure which beach it is, but you can see all the oil rigs uh, during this, this oil crazy oil boom in 1910s, pre-World War uh, uh, I. Um, so um, the, uh, the thing about the Tomol is it can uh, seat uh, 12 people and having that many people, that expanding expanded their fishing ground big time. So what does expanding the fishing ground get you? You can trade there for your, your trade network is uh, multiplied, magnified. Uh, which means if you you have a larger trade network, you can specialize more. And if you specialize more, your society can stratify. And besides, it takes 500 person days to build a, a single boat. So who, whoever organized that and controls the, uh, the, the, uh, the boat is gonna have an awful lot of uh, uh, political power and, and then uh, wealth, and he's going to accumulate a lot of seashells and teeth as uh, uh, a sign of uh, uh, wealth. Um, the fun debate is uh, uh, going on with uh, uh, archaeologists now, um, and I, 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 they say it's still raging. Uh, uh, the question is, could this tumult and the technology have been introduced by directly by uh, Polynesians or indirectly by contact uh, with Polynesians. That the the name uh, Tumul itself is uh, vaguely uh, Polynesian, and there there are some tantalizing uh, uh, findings that the the DNA of some chickens in South America apparently uh, have the DNA of uh, Polynesian. Uh, chickens. I'll just finish off uh, with with this. Um, the the uh, 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 the things in uh, uh, square uh, are uh, the areas where they had the the certain uh, 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 kind of uh, technology, uh, the certain kind of boats, and you can see that the the Chumash. The boats that they had had a lot of similarity to the, the boats in, in the uh, green squares. And one of the green squares is the Caroline Islands, where we happened uh, uh, to visit. Um, we visited uh, Ponape, um, and uh, the Caroline Islands uh, uh, were a, a, a a frequent place for, and we'll we'll learn about the the Manila, the Spanish Manila galleons that um, uh, uh, carry silver from Mexico and pick up uh, Chinese merchandise in, in Manila, um, and the, the the Manila galleons went through uh, the Carolines. But while we were in Pompeii, uh, we were taken out to this uh, Venice. Uh, it was a, a collection of structures built with ba basalt bricks, uh, artificial islands, um, and this is what it looked like. It was un unbelievable. And these people had the same kind of boats that the Chumash and the uh, Channel Islands had. The other thing is that we were always told wherever we went, oh, there's one... This is nice here in Pompeii, but if you really want to get away from it, you need to go one more island out. And it was Kapingi Marangi. 
And for Eiko and I, it's always been this mirage that there's always the grass is always greener. There's always a better, more obscure place to, uh, to go. And sure enough, uh, uh, it's an island of uh, uh, not many people at all, but they've got now a YouTube uh, uh, tourist promotion. Uh, the final technology was, was on the Channel Islands was fish hooks, uh, uh, arrowheads. Um, and then uh, just to, uh, to finish, here are some Chumash names that may be familiar to you. Where did these names uh, come from? And I, I think that uh, that is uh, 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 charming. Uh, to, to know Point Mugu <laughs> came uh, from from uh, the Chumash, probably the the earliest uh, Cal California uh, tribe. So I'll stop there and take uh, uh, any, any questions you might have. So John, yeah, Harold. This is Harold. Uh, a lot of that. Tar was basically seeps out of the out of the ocean, Santa Barbara Channel, and also in in L.A. Long Beach. As a kid, yeah. I used to go to the ocean, and the first thing you had to watch out for was tar that had washed in, because if you stepped on it, it stayed there for quite a while in the bottom of your foot. I I, I had that too. I I I spent a year in uh, uh, on the beaches of uh, 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 North San Diego County. The exact same thing. Exactly. And, the, and the other thing I wanted to to mention is uh, on the road up to uh, Mount Wilson uh, in the uh, San Gabriel Mountains, there's a like a forest ranger uh, display museum and it's run by the local Indians. And one of the things they pointed out was there was a trade between the Indians in the mountains and to the east in, in the high desert and the ones that lived along the shore. And they actually traded tar and shells with the mountain Indians and the mountain Indians had uh, Pine pine resin and uh, pine cone nuts and other other things that they traded and and obsidian obsidian yeah and and obsidian and when we were uh, in Arizona I I showed the 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 one um, uh, ruin that, that was south of uh, uh, Tuba City that pretty ancient uh, the the one that had the ball court that uh, uh, probably was part of the, the, the Mayan uh, 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 ball uh, court uh, culture. Um, Olmec, by, by the way, it means rubber. Uh, and the, the Olmec or, or were the people of the rubber ball. <laughs> they, um, uh, and, and so it was, it, uh, the, the, the ball game was was really, really big. And it's not unlike basketball, except the hoop is up and <laughs> down rather than uh, uh, side to side. Um, but uh, uh, in that culture, they had seashells and there were no uh, seas around Arizona. Uh, at that time, there may have been some ancient seabeds, but uh, most of those shells were traded all the way from from the coast, and that was eye opening for me to say to see how th this network they were all tied together. And we'll see when Cabrillo gets uh, to San Diego. Um, word of uh, 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 Coronado's atrocities uh, have made it to the coast, and all the uh, uh, natives there are, are afraid of the Spaniards, uh, and they're afraid that uh, Cabrillo is going to be as bad a dude as Coronado was. Aiko. Um the Athabascans, when they came down from Alaska, I mean Asia, Alaska, and all that, they come to California. They're they're pretty they're uh, very warlike people. Why did they just crush the mild California Indians and stay in California? After all, it's pretty nice. <laughs> well, they the, they may have, and and uh, uh, to the extent that. They filled up what areas they could fill up, and then 
uh, when there was overpopulation, they moved on. I mean, I don't know. The, uh, the other thing is, you said net fishing. The Eurocs were given permission to net fish and nobody else. But it seems like you could catch more fish, but with a boat, I mean, with the um, uh, pole than a net. What's the advantage of net fishing? Well, I you cast your net and you can pull in a lot of fish. Oh, you mean that? I was thinking of a little tiny net on the end of a pole. Oh, that. Oh, no, no. Big <laughs> nets. Big nets. <laughs> no, not little nets. Big nets. Yeah, like 20 by 50 feet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John, I got to go. And everybody, okay. thanks. Thanks for the talk. Bye, guys. All right. Bye. See y'all later. <laughs> I kept thinking of the Indian guy with the little net.